am live with you today with my very good friend, Arlene Battersill. Her and I met uh, recently because I was a guest on her amazingly fabulous podcast. And, you know, some people you just connect with more than others and you ask like, hey, can we do anything else together? So we have decided to do this Facebook ad targeting live training today. You know, success with Facebook advertising is entirely dependent on the quality of your ad targeting. And in this training, we're gonna look at examples of how little small changes to your ad targeting can have a huge impact on your lead generation and sales. Now, this is so ironic because just yesterday I was talking to a podcaster in LA and she was telling me how she was absolutely crushed because a couple of years ago when she did her first launch for her online program, it failed and she had spent all this money. And I said, you know what? I said, you listen to one of those Facebook marketers and half of them don't know what they're talking about. And she said, you're absolutely right. So this other launch she did, which she got with, a, with an amazing person, she had all her results were fabulous and everything went smoothly. So the way that you do your Facebook advertising is so important. Now, Arlene is a recognized expert in Facebook advertising and ad targeting in particular. Uh, her history, her energy is just incredible. She has had extensive experience with consumer segmentation where she can identify the best customer for a product and also messaging that is designed to get people to click and buy. She's also a best-selling author on what motivates people to buy. So take it away, Arlene. <laughs> thank you, Mary. I sure appreciate it. Well, you know, thank you for the opportunity uh, for me to talk to people about Facebook advertising and ad targeting in particular. Um, my area of expertise in ad targeting, uh, and when you, we use the big fancy words, consumer segmentation and all that crap, it really is nothing more than really trying to figure out, okay, who is the best person to buy my product? And how do we do that? How do we figure out if you've got a population of 10 million people, how do you cherry pick the best people that are predisposed or most likely going to be interested in what you have to offer. And this is the piece that gets everyone tripped up every single time when they're doing their Facebook ads because they actually don't know who their best audience is. Who is the best person for me to sell this product to? And so they'll buy a bunch of Facebook uh, advertising courses and they'll try and, you know, look stuff up on the internet and they'll sign up for people's, um, you know, email lists and stuff like this, but they never actually get to the core of how do we understand the consumer and the things that they buy and why do they buy them? Because if we could understand what makes a person tick around what they buy, it would be easy peasy for us to sell to them. But unfortunately, the whole business of ad targeting and understanding what makes people tick around what they buy is not something that people generally talk about. They talk about, oh, well, you need to find people who look a certain way. They have a certain profile, certain char characteristics, and that's who you want to go after. But when you look at characteristics of people like their age or their location and things like that, that doesn't reveal to us what they're likely to buy. And so we need signals from the consumer that give us an indication of what they're likely to buy. And Facebook is brilliant at giving us information about all of the people on Facebook, all two billion of them, about what they are likely to want to buy. And how do we know that? Well, every time you click a like on a Facebook page, or a Facebook post that has certain content in it. Facebook is basically logging all of that information and dumping it into this massive database, which comes out in what we call the Facebook Ads Manager. So all of that data that Facebook's collecting on us, every single thing that we click like on, every comment that we make, every share of a post, we are signaling to Facebook, I'm interested in this, okay? And what Facebook does is it gives us all of that data back, but we have to be able to say to Facebook, okay, Facebook, I only want people who look a certain way. And if we are not, um, if we're not careful about how we create the profile of someone or the appearance of someone, 
we can end up completely sabotaging our efforts and also end up spending a tremendous amount of money that we don't need to spend because we're actually targeting the wrong audience. And when I use the word targeting, what I mean in Facebook terms is we're looking at an audience of people that we want to deliver our ad to. We want to tell Facebook, okay, go find me all the people who look this way or who've expressed an interest in something and show them the ad. Don't show anybody else the ad. And so the more refined you are in the audience profile, if you will, some people call it an avatar. That's just a made up word that's come into vogue over the last couple of years. But the reality is, is we're looking at a profile of the ideal person to buy your product. So I wanna give you a couple of examples to help you make this distinction between the characteristics of people that don't tell us anything in terms of what they're likely to buy and characteristics that tell us many things. And when I'm talking about characteristics, I'm talking about the ways that we all self-identify on Facebook. And it's either in how we've created our Facebook profiles where we just give up all this private information to Facebook, or it's in all the things that we've clicked like on. So I'm going to uh, give you an example here. So let's say you are going to sell a program that is designed to help people lower their debt or get rid of their debt. And that's a lot of people because we're all living in a time where people are spending way more than they've got coming in and they can get themselves in trouble. So let me ask you based on this profile and you'll have to excuse me, I'm looking at my phone because I've got it here and I'm looking at the computer <laughs> at the same time. So let me ask you the following. If we could identify everyone on Facebook who's female, between the ages of 18 and 24, they're young, college age, that are, let's say, living in Los Angeles, they're a college graduate, and they're single, meaning they're not, they haven't self-identified as being in a relationship. And I wanna sell a debt reduction program to this person. Is there anything about what I've just told you about that person that would indicate to you that this person is having financial trouble? Absolutely nothing. No. Female, 18 to 24, living in LA, college graduate, and is single. I guess the only thing I could assume, and it would be a stretch, is that they probably racked up some credit card debt and student loans while yeah. they were in college. But other right. than that, no, because I don't know anything about their personal spending habits or I don't know any of that. Exactly. And the thing is, is that what I just described to you is probably the most common way that people target people on Facebook. They just right. look at the, the personal characteristics that are just really describing who the person is, but it doesn't tell us anything about what their situation is in life. Uh, if that person happened to have been divorced as opposed to single, we might be able to assume or infer from that, that if they're divorced, they now have a single income household, which could indicate to us that they could be struggling financially, but there's not enough information there to have us think, okay, this woman is definitely in trouble. So now let me give you the next one and tell me if this resonates in any way. If you're going to try and sell someone a debt reduction program, Okay, so we've got the same woman. She's a uh, female between 18 and 24. She lives in LA, she's a college graduate. She's single and she's expressed an interest by clicking like all over Facebook in high priced shopping stores, Kim Kardashian, Tony Robbins, Susie Orman, and has several credit cards. Now that's information that's available to you on Facebook right now. You could select all of those things. Based on the profile I just gave you, what do you think that profile means? Well, just in the shopping habits alone, it means she is spending more money than necessary. You know, she's not shopping at Walmart. She's probably shopping at Gucci and Rodeo Drive. She's got uh, champagne taste. But the fact that she also hooked up there with uh, Susie Ormond, tells me that she has some financial concerns. So it's not, it's not a ton of information, but it's way better than just the demographic information. 
right, absolutely. And the Susie Orman is the key in this profile. That right. for anyone who knows who Susie Orman is, they know that she's the financial guru that helps people. Hey, I'm the next Susie Orman right here. <laughs> You're looking at her. I believe you, Mary. I have no <laughs> doubt about that. <laughs> but here's, here, here is uh, why I put this profile together in the way that I did. Okay, she's got an interest in high-priced shopping stores, uh, but it doesn't mean she's actually shopping there. Ah, good point. It just point. means she's interested in them. She's interested in um, Neiman Marcus and Saks Fifth Avenue and Fred Siegel and all this other kind of stuff. So she likes the high-end stores, but there's nothing yet that indicates to me that she's actually shopping there. She's just an exp she's just expressed an interest, and she's between the ages of 18 and 24. So mm, she likes the fancy stores, may not have the budget for it. Now we throw Kim Kardashian in there, and we now know that she follows celebrities. And she likes high-priced stores. And then we throw Tony Robbins in there, which means now she has high aspirations. And she's, she's believing in living the dream that she has yet to realize. And you throw Susie Orman in there. It's, she's totally bought into celebrity culture. She's buying everything Kim Kardashian. She's buying into the whole, you know, I can be anything I want to be in life mindset of all of the, you know, lifestyle gurus and so forth. And she has expressed an interest in Susie Orman. This girl's in trouble. And she has several credit cards. This girl is way in trouble. And she is the ideal candidate for us to deliver an ad to that's talking about debt reduction. So when I lay it out that way, it seems really easy. Because to me, it's really easy because I've done this kind of work for decades. But for the person who is just new to Facebook advertising and is still trying to figure out who is the ideal consumer for their product, you really have to get into the behavior of people. What is it that, how are they signaling to us as sellers that they would be interested in something that we have to offer? Now, I want to talk a little bit about how we can actually sabotage our efforts because we think we know something and we don't or it looks like the right profile but there's something within that profile that is throwing everything off so let me give you an example um, I've dealt with people I, I'm, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this but there's something called forex f-o-r-e-x and it's for currency trading it's like a stock market for currency Okay, and people do day trading to capitalize on the fluctuation in the exchange rates on money. There's a whole like stock market for this called Forex. Okay, and the people who do this, who invest in this kind of thing, are what we call day traders. Okay, now one of the things that happens is when you're selling financial services, it could be you know teach you how to do day trading, teach you how to manage your mutual funds, and all this kind of crap. You have to be very careful about the profile you construct so that you don't essentially contaminate or sabotage your ad and the delivery of that ad. And let me show you how this works or talk to you about how this works. Okay, you can go on Facebook and find all of these people who are interested in day trading and Forex currency markets, okay? But the audience is quite small. We're talking, you know, it could be maybe 10,000 people. And most people will look at that audience profile and say, well, it's not enough people for me to advertise to. I need many, many more. And what they'll do is they will add to that profile I just described, and they'll add in Charles Schwab. They'll add in TV Waterhouse. They'll add in Scott Trade and E-Trade. And now they've got a profile of that, that is coming back with millions and millions of people that they can advertise to, okay? So they think, oh, I've got lots of people to advertise to. All these people are going to buy my product. The problem is there is a huge distinction between people who are day traders, who are actively involved in managing their money and in trading their money, and people who have mutual funds, like Charles Schwab. People who have mutual funds basically have someone else either manage their money or they'll select a handful of mutual funds and dump all their money there. It's and then, low risk. There, yeah. yeah. And, the and there's just, funds are low risk and the day trading is yeah. very high risk. So totally right. different personalities. 
but the other issue is the, the main distinction between the two groups is the day traders are actively doing it. The mutual fund people are hands off. Right. And as a result, what's going to happen is if you want to target an audience of people who are hands on, never in a million years would you go after the mutual fund people because they're in mutual funds because they don't want to manage their money. So, so as a result, what you're saying is you've just paid for an ad to go out to millions of people who are never going to buy your product because it was only really that original 10,000 yes. that were going to have any potential at all. But you wrote that off because or me as the, as the advertiser is writing that off because I didn't think it was a bigger audience. I didn't think it was a big enough yes. or a substantial enough audience. Exactly. And so you can't be, um, you cannot think that the size of your audience is what matters because here's the deal. You don't need, I don't need a million people to see my product and not buy it. I need a thousand people to see my product and buy it. So I don't actually care how many people see my ad as long as they are the right people. Right. Exactly. And so as was the case with the people that I've dealt with in the past, and there have been a number of them in this whole Forex thing. I don't even know what the thing is. All I know is it's people who actively trade every day and people who are hands off. Well, when they put those two populations together, they got no response and spent tens of thousands of dollars advertising to all the wrong people. And the second that we pulled out all of those people from that original population, I think in and uh, this was, they were selling a $4,000 training program to teach people how to trade currency. And I think with 24 hours, they had 400 people sign up for that training program. Whereas prior to that, after spending, and they had spent $100 on their ad. And wow. over, they had 400 people sign up. Why? Because we were targeting the right people. So you have to be very careful when you're putting together. Can I, can I just pause a moment? Yeah. Okay. So for any of you that have ever tried to sell anything on Facebook, what Arlene said is actually just huge. To have 400 people sign up for a $4,000 program is beyond results that I've ever heard of someone getting when they're just sort of winging it. And even like myself, I mean, I hired a Facebook marketer not too long ago and I'll tell you what, the guy didn't know what he was talking about. He was a nice guy and stuff, but at the end of the day, we worked with him for three months. We didn't sell one program. We sold this many, zero. We sold zero programs. We had a great program and it went nowhere. And here's the other danger in this. Um, the program that I was selling was for people who wanted to become a guest on a podcast. And you know, there was a short, because I was the first person to come out with a course like this. Well, I feel like that window of opportunity has shrunk now because now there's a lot of courses about that, but I was the first one and I really wasted that, that window. And so I just want to say, congratulations because 400 signups um I i'm just blown away right now yeah <laughs> well it, it really comes down to what is the caliber of your audience have you found the people that have essentially raised their hand and said i'm interested in this or something very similar to it because you know you sometimes have to look at okay can we target people who've expressed an interest in another product that may be a companion to mine or would be similar to mine, and you've got an angle or a hook in your product that just sets it apart from what everybody else is doing. Well, there's no reason that those people who may have bought a competitor's product or are interested in a competitor's product aren't going to be interested in yours and may buy yours if it's presented properly to them. So when we're looking at our audiences, you really have to think about, okay, who is this person? What is going on for them? What, you know, what makes them tick? And the thing you have to realize about people buying things is everybody buys based on their emotions. 90% of our purchasing is based on our emotions. And the remaining 10% of our logic is what we use to justify those purchases. 
It's just that simple. We buy, I mean, you just think about everything that you bought recently and you think about why did I buy that thing? Well, I bought it to make myself feel better. I bought it because I needed it because I had run out of something. So I had to have it. There's an emotion associated with that. The distress associated with not having. Oh, yeah. I mean, every, everything I've bought lately, I think is associated with my son. So, you know, I'm buying it to because I feel like I will create a deeper connection with yeah. my son by providing him this thing that yeah. he wants. And there you go. That's how we create spoiled children. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and how we work out all our issues. <laughs> and we all do it. You know, we're all just trying to make ourselves. Well, and you know, in the last conversation you and I were having, we were talking about, you know, being in those large event arenas and how they, they really, you know, they sell you on an idea of how life is going to be if you purchase their product or go to their event or sign up for their mastery program or whatever it is. And you see people run to the back of the room. You mentioned Tony Robbins. I've just spent the last, I spent uh, four days last week at a Tony Robbins event. And, you know, I've been to them many, many times, but there is that like, you know, we're getting tired, the event's going on for a long time, we're seeing these, these videos, and we're really attracted to like, wow, my life can feel that way or look that way. And, you know, some of these programs, like, um, they're, they're more niche, which I love, because I love the example that you came up with the, with the Forex, because you, you tar, you highlighted how you can be successful with a small audience. I saw a post in a Facebook group that I'm in, um, where people who are doing webinars, and a woman had an extremely successful launch and she is a vegan bodybuilder. Yeah. That's really niche, you know, she, and the amount of programs that she sold, she was projecting that she was going to make a million dollars in a one year time period just by selling her vegan bodybuilding program. And she's female. I don't know a lot of female vegan bodybuilders. Absolutely. I know zero of them. So there you go. She must have had a small audience, but she did something right because her launch was extremely yeah. successful. Yeah, absolutely. And, and there are two components to this that are, are absolutely critical in, the, in your success in selling anything, especially if you're selling online. And that has to do with what is the quality of your audience? Meaning, are they predisposed? Are they hungry to buy what you have to offer? And how do we know they're hungry? Because they're self-identifying with their behavior on Facebook. Everything that they click like on, Facebook gives us that information. We can look at that and see who all is out there. But the second thing is, what you must remember is that Facebook is just a traffic source. Facebook does not generate sales. What Facebook does is it delivers the person from Facebook to wherever it is you want them to go to see what you have to offer. Now, I can, I can drive traffic all day long to anybody because I know how to do the targeting. But what I cannot do is make up for a bad offer or a shitty looking landing page or website or messaging that does not resonate with the consumer. You know, you, you have to have both of these pieces. You have to have the right audience identified so that you have the traffic coming to you. And then when they get to the destination where you're sending them to from Facebook, you have to present something to them that is very compelling. And that in all likelihood, she had vegan bodybuilders, female, and there aren't that many of them. And then whatever it was that she was offering, wherever she was sending them was so compelling that people felt I must have this. And to your point about what goes on with Tony Robbins and the rest of the people who are selling from the stage is that they, they sell you on your hopes and dreams and aspirations. They are not selling the product. They are not selling the message of, you know, this product is consists of, you know, six video modules and one personal phone call with me a week for the next 200 years or some crap like that. What they do in their pitch, they're never selling the product. They never sell facts and figures, features and benefits. They only sell, they sell you on the belief that you can have everything that you want in life. It is the most effective way of selling everything. And so what you must do in what you are selling is present it in a way that makes people feel that their life is going to be better or they're going to have a different life, a life that they want as a result 
of engaging with you and buying whatever it is that you have for sale. And so you have to make it really simple and just address what is it? I mean, the vegan bodybuilders are women who clearly care about their nutrition, their body, they care about the environment, they care about animals, and they wanna look good, and they're interested in doing something that is completely unexpected, which is going to raise their status out in the world. Everybody's gonna say, holy crap, you're a bodybuilder and you're vegan? How did that happen? So that's a real niche market. And you know, you can say some of the top athletes in the world have become vegan. Now there is something to be said, and them being bodybuilders could be their way of getting their own message out there about, look, people, you know, we're destroying the environment with the methane gas that's coming from cows and all the kind of crap that goes on. Um, and so they're, they are achieving something that sets them apart from everybody else. They're bodybuilders, which is very rare for people, and the fact that they're vegan. So how are they getting the protein to build their bodies, which makes them quite extraordinary. So I think that if you can get that you have access to everybody on Facebook, if you understand that, and you can paint a picture of the people that are most interested in buying from you, and you really truly understand what these different things mean in the targeting, you will have significantly more success at getting the right traffic going to your offer. Now, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna just share my screen uh, oh, uh, you know what? I just got a message, Mary, that the, uh, my screen sharing has been disabled. Can you check? Oh, no. That? Let me check on that. Um, I might have to click my somebody to come and help me. <laughs> Give me just a moment. Hey, Soraya. Yeah. Can you come help me enable Arlene's ability to screen share? Yeah. All right. Because uh, what I want to do once we are uh, able to have me uh, share Oh, I, I, look at that. Arlene, I am a genius. Well, already then. I fixed it all by myself. We're, we're okay, try it now. I think, I, I think, uh, yeah, I got it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so, okay, so um, what I want to do is I want to actually show you the targeting inside of Facebook's ads manager. And the ads manager is the advertising platform that we use inside of Facebook. It's like an application, you know, that you might use for, it's like Excel, but inside of Facebook. And it's not Excel, but you get the point. There's an application that you're using to do something and it just happens to exist within Facebook. And so what I wanna do is um, just show you that uh, here in, in my newsfeed, uh, right here on the left side is the ads manager. And I'm okay. not gonna, for all the technical stuff it's just you would go into ads manager and now you're inside the guts of facebook where all this data lives now let me give you an example of something um let's say that you sell animal themed jewelry and it's rather expensive sterling silver so you could buy a pair of dachshund earrings for 150 bucks okay so if i were selling that product who would i be looking for well the first question is um, is it dog people? Is it just dachshund people? Uh, is there anything else? We, we know obviously the target audience are going to be people who like dachshund dogs, right? Well, here's the problem. If I go in here and I show you, this is, this is the, um, this is the area of ads manager where you create the targeting. And this is the audience section. And what I've done here in advance of our call today is I've just set this up. Okay, so I want just people who have expressed an interest in dachshunds. That's all I've indicated. Well, take a look here. You've got uh, over here 8.1 million people who've expressed an interest in dachshunds. Okay, um, does That's that tell big, you? Right? That's too big. It doesn't tell us enough. Yeah, it doesn't tell. Just because you're interested in a dachshund, you might have seen a post on Facebook with you know a wiener dog that was wearing you know, a birthday hat or something. And so you click like on that, or you like funny videos and, and things like that. That does not indicate, just because they've expressed an interest in docs and dogs does not tell me they are buyers. And the other problem is, is that you've got 8.1 million people on Facebook who's, who've expressed an interest in docs and dogs. Well, that doesn't tell me anything. 
So now what I did is I added in something else. I said, okay, I just want Facebook, just give me those people who've expressed an interest in dachshunds and must have also expressed an interest in Petco. Okay, well, look at where it went. It went from 8.1 million down to 2.2 million. But here's the thing. If they're shopping at Petco, um, you know, they're not shopping in specialty pet shops, although they may, but in all likelihood, they're shopping at the mall. It's quick and easy to run and get the dog food from Petco. And, you know, it's relatively inexpensive. So that's where they're going to go. So just because they're interested in dachshunds and probably shop at Petco does not indicate to me that they're likely to want to buy a $150 pair of sterling silver dachshund earrings. Okay. So how do we get at it? Well, here you go. The first thing you have to think is, okay, if you've got a $150 pair of earrings, sterling silver, and they are so niche specific as in a dachshund dog, not even just a dog, but this specific breed of dog, um, you have to have somebody who's got some money that's going to drop 150 bucks for their passion for their little doxy dog, right? Right. Okay. So you think to yourself, okay, are 18 year olds likely to spend that kind of money? No, no. You're talking about people who are, um, who've been working, who are probably affluent, who pay attention to lots of things involving dogs on an upscale basis. And so what we start with is we're going to reduce our audience down to anybody who's age 40 and over, because those are the people who have the money, right? Let's face it. You're 40, you've been working for 20 years, you've got some money in the bank. Okay, and you're interested in dachshunds. But this is where we can actually get at the people who are likely to buy from us. The people who are going to buy from us are the people who are interested in the dog shows. Because those are people who've got money because they've got show dogs. It doesn't mean our audience has show dogs. It means our audience are avid dog fans and that they watch the Westminster Kennel Club dog show on TV. They can't wait. Every year they're watching it and watching the dogs prance and all the training that goes on with the dogs. They go to the dog shows and crap like that. All of that takes money. So for our purposes of selling a $150 pair of sterling silver dachshund earrings, we want people who have money and who we think are so avid or rabid about these dog breeds that those are the people that we want. So our targeting is going to be anyone who's 40 and older who has expressed an interest in these dog shows and who must have also expressed an interest in dachshunds. And look at what happens to the numbers. I now have 30,000 people who I can reasonably conclude have money and have it, clearly have an interest in dogs but in particular, they're interested in dachshunds. I can tell you for a fact that when I ran ads with this targeting, it was stunning the number of sales that came through as a result because we simply ran the traffic from the Facebook ad to the page of the website that had this specific pair of earrings. And so this had a much more direct relationship between the Facebook ad and the actual sale. Now, you're generally going to see um, an ad generating or being what leads to the sales when you're talking about physical products that are not super expensive, that, you know, anything that you sell up to about 200 bucks is an easy buy for most people. They won't think twice about dropping a couple of hundred bucks. $200 in retail is the mark where people say, mm, yeah, I got to think about this a little bit. And they don't do the impulse buy. But with a product like this, you're playing on people. Oh, and the, and the image that we used um, in the ad was a picture of a dachshund puppy and looking all cute with the big eyes and everything. And right next to it, it said, baby wants a new pair of earrings. <laughs> and so it makes the consumer laugh. They see the beautiful earrings. Next thing you know, they click on the ad and they're at the page where they can buy. And that's exactly what they did. And... 30,000 people, you may say, yeah, but that's not very much. But if, if a, a significant percentage of 30,000 people or even a small percentage of 30,000 people buy your product, you have to think, well, I, I don't need 30,000 people to buy my product. I don't have 30,000 pairs of earrings. 
So, you know, why are you going to go to advertise to a gazillion people when you can't even and, deliver the product? And this is absolutely blowing my mind because this is the opposite. It's exactly the opposite of what I've been doing. In fact, I have been adding to my audience, trying to make it bigger and bigger and bigger. So I have been doing it the opposite way because I guess my mindset or my thought process was the more people who saw it, the more exposure I was getting, but it's the opposite because I was getting a zero quality exposure or a low quality exposure when what I would have been better off doing was getting a high quality exposure to a smaller audience. Exactly, and to your point, Mary, I I can tell you from my experience being on the TV show Shark Tank, when my episode aired in, um, it was March of 2012. It's been six years now since my episode aired and it's in reruns all over the world. I was going to say, I, I have to watch this now. <laughs> yeah. It, well, okay. So I had 6 million people the first time the show aired. There were 6 million people watching live on national television. I had a 15 minute free commercial on national television. On a Friday night where 6 million people saw my product. Well, in the span of the two weeks after I was on the show, I did a total of $8,000 in sales. So having 6 million people see my product meant absolutely nothing because they weren't my customer. Right. And just because you have exposure does not make it good exposure. It can be bad exposure. And so what you're looking for is you know, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, we need to have the biggest possible because then as people start clicking on the ad, Facebook's computer programs are going to start analyzing the profile of that person to then say, okay, I'm going to go after the rest of the 8 million people I'm targeting and try and find people who look like that person who just clicked. Well, do you know how much money you're going to spend before you actually find enough people that look like your person? you'll you'll go bankrupt and the only people who use that method of targeting broad and wide are people who have $250,000 Facebook ad budgets and what I do with people and what I've always done in my own advertising is my goal is to spend as little as possible to get the best results and so it has always been my approach to take the big audience and keep drilling down drilling down drilling down so that I can start by giving faith the profile of the person who makes the most sense. And then it's up to Facebook to go find those people and bring them back to me. And you will always have a higher conversion rate of people you start with as being highly targeted, assuming you've got the correct target. So this is where you have to be careful by looking at every single thing that you're specifying makes up your audience. This is where, like I said, the Forex currency trading people who are actively trading every day versus the Charles Schwab mutual fund people, if you stick the two of them together, you're confusing Facebook by saying, okay, I want these day traders and I want these people who don't do day trading. Well, Facebook is saying, well, who do you want? Who do you really want? Because if you don't specify between the two, I'm just gonna show it out to everybody. And if one group is bigger than the other group, I'm gonna show it to those people. So I'm never gonna show your ad to the day trading people. So one of the things that um, I will go ahead and admit that has been intimidating to me about this screen is that I didn't understand like the things that you're showing about how you started with Dosh Hound and then you added the Petco, but then you added these interests. I never understood the way that Facebook combined these to narrow your audience. I, so I, um, I found this screen in particular a little bit intimidating and confusing. And so you've done a good job to show what this means is that you're saying they must have Dosh Hound and also Dog Show. Yes. And it's also, hard. see, I didn't understand that before you yeah, explained it. It's really hard for people to understand when they get into the screen here because what most people do is up here in the interests, it says here, okay, here are demographics. Where do they live? How old are they? Are they male or female? And you can specify what language they speak. Okay, that's your demographic information. Now, when we get into the targeting where we're now creating the real profile, the buyer profile, is we get into the section here where the first thing we're, we're putting in here, it could be anything. So I could have put docs in here and put 
you know, the dog show down here. It doesn't matter. It works. Okay. In the bottom line is, is you're putting something in here. And what most people do is they just dump a whole bunch of things in here. So this would be Forex trading and day trading and Charles Schwab and, you know, E-Trade. And now this, what, what you're saying to Facebook is include people who match at least one of the following things. So it could be just give me the Charles Schwab people, give me the day trading people. Any of those are fine. And Facebook's like, what are you asking me for? Because none of these things make sense when you put them together. Whereas if you stick all of the dog shows together, anybody who's like dog shows is accounted for in here. Right. Then what we say is we narrow further. Here's this option here. We're going to narrow this audience here. We're going to narrow it further to say among these people who are between the ages of 40 and 65, of those people, I only want those people, I only want those people that have expressed an interest in docs and dogs. Because what it's saying right here is, I want to include anybody who's in any one of these categories. And of those people, they must have expressed an interest in dachshunds. So now that's how we went from, you know, 4 million, well, here it is, you've got 4.7 million people who have generally expressed an interest in dachshunds. And then when we qualify the dachshund people to say, okay, they're interested in dachshunds, they're between 40 and 65 because they have the money, and they're interested in dog shows, which are people that generally are more affluent. Right. These are people who are interested in my doxy dog, are going to be interested in my doxy dog earrings. Uh, this Incredible. is the closest we're gonna get to a profile for that type of product. And so for people who are selling online training programs, because that's a lot of what people are selling now, when you look at your audience, you have to be thinking about, okay, who is this person that's sitting in front of me? If I were sitting in front of that person and they were to describe themselves, yeah, they tell me how old they are, where they live, you know, whether they're married, whether or not they're a college graduate and all this kind of crap. But when you start exploring further, and let's say you, you're trying to sell them a, a self-help program or a, a program on increasing your self-confidence, well, if you're not self-confident, how would you indicate that in what you clicked on on Facebook? Well, you might be clicking on psychology websites. You might be clicking on anxiety-related websites. You might be clicking on uh, any website that might have something to do, or any Facebook page that might have something to do with uh, confidence. And you might be clicking like on public speakers that are known for a particular topic. And so you could be um, creating a profile of someone that is really indirectly telling us that they are suffering with anxiety or suffering from self-doubt or a lack of confidence. And you can target those people. And if you have the right message with that audience, you're going to have people clicking on what you have to offer. Now, whether or not they buy is going to be entirely dependent on how compelling your offer is. And I don't mean, oh, I've got this program. It's available for $9.97 for one week only, blah, blah, blah. No, your offer is how successful have you been at getting them to believe that you have the solution to their problem. And I'm not talking the training program. I'm talking that however you have presented yourself and what you have to offer makes them feel that their pain is going to go away, that their problem is solved, and that they are going to have the life that they really want instead of the one that they have. That's what this all comes down to. It's, it's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> as, are, as are you. <laughs> All right, I'm going to stop sharing and come back and see you. There we go. I had no idea you were going to blow me away this much today. <laughs> well, this is the real power of Facebook. And this is, it, it's not just the power of Facebook. It is the power of understanding buyers and consumers and what motivates them to buy and what makes up their profile in terms of, okay, they, they could buy any number of things. What are they likely to buy? Well, what have they bought in the past? What have they expressed an interest in in the past? How are they identifying with certain things? So for example, if you're a Green Bay Packers football fan, 
you'd be targeting people in Green Bay. You'd be targeting, well, it wouldn't be just Green Bay. You'd be targeting the Green Bay Packers because those are fans of the Green Bay Packers. And then you might want to target the, maybe it's, you know, some kind of a Green Bay Packers related product. Um, and you're targeting, let's say it's the men who have a particular affinity for this particular type of product because there are other products out there that are like it, but not related to the Packers. Uh, and that's who you're going to go after. So, you know, one thing I'll, I'll tell you about something that uh, I've been watching happening recently is that I've been working with someone who um, has a very specific target audience and the audience is not very big, but let me share with you that they did one post and I think, I, I don't know, it was a couple of hundred bucks they spent on advertising what was in this post. Um, and there was a video associated with this. And there were 13,000 people who were presented with this particular ad, 3,000 of which is what they actually paid for. And they had 5,800 people actually watch the video because wow. the audience was so precise. And for the, the campaigns that I know about, well, I'm helping with, um, we're getting a an engagement rate meaning people have clicked like commented or share of between 20 and 30 percent for every single ad that we're putting out because we're just trying to create awareness of something mm -hmm. and we've got the right audience and we've got the right message and that's why you're seeing those kinds of numbers and the audience itself is not very big we're talking maybe i don't know fifty thousand people so this is this what i've just shown you today is the most powerful thing about advertising on Facebook because you know people think that it's so hard to advertise on Facebook and it costs so much money but you know what what you could do uh, if your audience was you know in the example of the um, the dog jewelry if there were only 30,000 people there and you were spending $20 a day to reach you know five or eight hundred people you know at the end of five days you've reached you know four or five thousand people out of that 30,000 and you know if you're reaching four to five thousand people in an audience that is predisposed to be interested in what you have to offer you're going to sell stuff there's no there's no two ways about it it's just how it works because if you have the right people um why are they not buying sure they might not be buying because you know they got distracted and they didn't go forward with it or maybe they already have a pair of it and stuff but if you've presented something to someone who's predisposed to be interested in what you have to offer and it's at a moment in time where they see that ad even though they had never been thinking about something like this before they say oh my god look how cute that is i have to have it click by and they're done that's brilliant <laughs> it's brilliant. So we've had a couple people watching that have commented that they really enjoyed uh, this session. Uh, Sandra says it's fantastic. She's actually just about to launch, launch her program. And this information is amazing. And um, so I just want to let you know that people are watching and uh, responding and appreciating what you're telling them. Now for our audience or for anyone who watches this later, what is the call to action? What is the thing that you would like to see them do next? Well, I, I think that, you know, for Sandra, as you're getting ready to launch, it's going to be really, really important for you to nail down exactly who your audience is, because you can't use a scattershot approach like targeting 8 million people or even a She's million. A, she, I know who she is because she took one of my courses. She's a wedding planner. Okay. For a wedding planner. Now I'll, I'll give it to you straight, Sandra. This is a really tough thing because wedding planners, um, people tend to get referrals for all things wedding related or they get it's the same thing with wedding photographers it, it's all referral business or it's somebody in a local area that has a lot of visibility and so forth and so if you're teaching a course that's targeting wedding planners um, it may be a little bit difficult to find wedding planners because Facebook has eliminated uh, or is very near to eliminating job titles as one of the ways that we can identify people. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and so, and I don't know what her course is about. I just, for whatever reason, I remember uh, that's the industry that she works in. And whenever I see her post, it's like she's always posting that she's at a wedding planning event. 
Mm-hmm. So that that's why that. So what it uh, what what's the uh, next step for people who might be interested in any, even learning more? I know you were working on an online program. I'm not sure if that's ready to launch. Well, you know what? I I actually do have an online training program that's specifically about uh, Facebook ad targeting, uh, and that certainly is available. And I can provide you with a link um, where people can take advantage of that. Um, y- you know, I. My, my feeling is, this is the way I like to work with people. Rather than have people buy a course where I walk them through all of this stuff, and because they're not expert at targeting, they can learn it, but to apply it is a completely different animal. And my feeling is, you know what? Rather than spend a thousand bucks on the course, you can spend a thousand bucks and have an hour with me where I will walk you through your targeting. You don't have to have examples that apply to everybody else but you. I can look at what you're selling, what the offer is, how you're presenting it, what the messaging is, what your ad is going to be, and help you create that ad and create that targeting. And so that's that's primarily what I do with people is I just sit down with them because I don't want them to spend, they need to get on their fastest path to cash right now. I like that, fastest path. Yeah, I, I, have, I have a new program coming out called Fastest Path to Cash <laughs> because <laughs> as entrepreneurs, you know, we're all freaked out about what our businesses are doing. Even if we're really successful, with, you and I both have seven figure businesses. Um, and still at the end of the day, we're still looking at, you know, where's that next dollar coming in? It produces a lot of anxiety. And, you know, I, I finally, throughout all of my experience with dealing with entrepreneurs, I put something together that's called the fastest path to cash. And because- and I'll say, I'll, I want to say too, that um, if you're considering contacting Arlene, um, after I did my podcast episode with her, I was so, I don't know, we just connected in a, in a very special way. And I actually asked her to do this for me. And I spent two hours of time with Arlene and what it did, it was on a different topic. It was more about Facebook posting and, and social, all things social media. But what she did for, for me and my team was we were overwhelmed. We were at capacity with our time and we were spending so much time trying to figure out what to post and where. And so in that two hours with Arlene, she laid out a very regimented uh, scheduling a p- blueprint for us that worked for our needs and that mixed up all the content in the way that we needed. And I actually think, I don't remember if we were on the phone for an hour or two hours, but it was well worth it because my team was able to, and, and I had a recording of the session. So they were able to listen to the recording and then they were able to follow the instructions step by step by step. And it was very clear. So I just want to give um, my own personal plug to Arlene that, um, and I also want to say, I am, I am generally untrusting of Facebook marketers. And so I would not have brought, well, I mean, I'm just being honest. Okay. I would not have brought Arlene to us today. If I did not have absolute trust in her integrity Um, absolute trust in her abilities because I think that one of the problems that I see in Facebook marketing is they want to charge a top dollar but they honestly don't they don't have their finger on the pulse of what's going on and so the the things that they tell you to do don't work Mm -hmm. and so what do you do at the end of the day because they're not guaranteeing you any results so if you if it didn't work you just threw your money in the toilet and so for someone to say um, here is how you do it. And even the information that she gave us today, I'll be really honest, it just completely um, did a 180 for me. And and I can feel a little bit more confident the next time that I give a try for Facebook advertising. So if you are signed up for the uh, Fearless Ambition newsletter, or if you signed up for this webinar today, we will go ahead and send you the recording of uh, this webinar with Arlene. And we'll also send you whatever links Arlene would like you to have as far as getting in contact with her. We'll also come in later and we'll put the links in this particular Facebook oh, post. But either way, and if you if you want the recording, just reach out in whatever way that you, you can. You can email me, mary at maryshores.com. I'll be happy to send you the recording because I want you to have it. I'm going to listen to it um, again myself when, when, uh, as soon as I can. So any final parting words for us, Arlene? Um, yeah, absolutely, Mary. And this is to your point about um, 
what you had been doing and how you had been doing it in the past and that you hadn't had the success with the people that you had worked with. The, the one thing you have to remember about doing Facebook ads, as with anything when you're in business, is you test it and see what happens. And if it doesn't work, you tweak it. So I am testing and tweaking constantly. So, you know, the way I get results is I start running an ad for 10 or 20 bucks a day. I let it run for a couple of days and I see whether or not that ad is delivering the traffic. And if it's not, then I have to go back and start tweaking. I'm looking at either the messaging or the image that I'm using or the targeting. I have to look at all of those things to make sure I've got everything dialed in. And then the ad is really delivering for me. But you, you can't look at, oh, I'm going to run a Facebook ad and suddenly think that, okay, now we've hit the holy grail. It's just, no, you've started advertising. You're trying to get some data back that confirms whether what you put out there is working and makes sense and you have the right audience. And if not, then you just keep tweaking it. And one thing to note in this two-part thing, which is you've got traffic and then you've got the sales pitch, which comes in the form of your website or your landing page. That's where you're trying to make the sale. If you have traffic and you are not converting people, you've got a problem with your landing page or your offer or the messaging. If you've got not such great traffic, but the traffic that is getting through and is converting, it means you have to do some adjustments on the ad side to increase the amount of traffic that you have. But your weakness is only going to be in one of two places. It's either in the traffic or what it is that you're presenting to people. Or, or both. Or, well, yeah, well, one thing has to happen first. Either you get the traffic or you don't. And if you don't get the traffic, nobody even ever sees what it is you have to offer. So who, who even knows whether or not it's effective? Right. <laughs> you have to have the traffic first. So, um, you know, as I said before, this is not really hard to do. It may feel really overwhelming. And I rattle this off my tongue because I deal with this stuff every single day. But you, are, I, and I deal with, you know, thousands of different products and services and training programs and what have you. So I've, I've just seen the whole thing. But for someone who's selling something very, very specific, if you get to a point where you can nail down an audience that is productive for you, you just keep running the ads over and over again and just change the images and stuff like that. Th this is not something that you have to labor over. You just have to get it right once and you're golden. And, and once you understand the formula of how to create that, you'll be able to create it again. Like Absolutely. if you come up with a new product or a new service or something that, that you want to take to the next level, once you understand how to make that formula work for yourself, you should right. be able to do it again. And, and also you should be able to triage the minute it's not working and be able right. to go and figure out what to do to correct that. So right. I That's thank great. you. I thank you so very, very much. And um, I hope that we continue to stay in touch with each other because Absolutely. I thoroughly enjoy knowing you. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> it's been a real <laughs> pleasure as well, Mary. We have a great connection. And I look forward to a long relationship with you throughout life. So thank you so very much. Yeah, me as well. All right. I'm going to say goodbye for now and we'll talk to you again soon. All right. Ciao. Ciao, ciao. Hey, this is Mary. Thanks so much for watching. Check out a free chapter of my book, Conscious Communications at maryshores.com forward slash free chapter. The link is in the description below.